Hello, hello. Brenda Schwader. <laughs> I just rolled my R. Brenda Schwader. I let's get down to it, man, because um working with this stuff, I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna do this jig part, but we're gonna work at it. We're gonna see if this works. Um hi Pat. Pat, did you get my my message this morning? That's going to join me in the collaboration respond as well. So um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go up to this mode. Let's go to this mode. There we go. And we're going to just switch back and forth here so you can kind of see me. Um, and then this is exactly that, that little setup that I was showing you. When I talk about a setup, um, as a matter of fact, let me unscrew this here. It's a, a setup is a um, is a combination of pegs that you've actually put into the um, the jig. So it's a whole different way of wire working. But here is let me go back to this so we can see it a little bit better. Each one of these is a setup, okay? And this is the actual when you get your jig template. If you do work on the jig, you're going to um, print it off on vellum paper so that you can see and align that on the jig top. There's the jig there. For those of you who have it, and then there's the setup. What we did, Sarah and I, is we split out. This is the, the same setup for all of these, but the thread or the wire paths are different on each. And so there's all these different ways. That's why I keep saying, I feel like I'm harping, um, that you can do, you know, a setup of, of pegs and just go so many different ways. Um, you lost your sound and you can't get it back. Ah! Ay, ay, ay. Might have to watch the replay. Sorry about that, Pat. Um, ah, and Lynn is here getting to the live for a change. <laughs> Pat, you and I are going to have to talk. She's saying, yes, yes, she's not, she's in, is participating, but she's not exactly sure what to do. Uh, could it be that I'm being a little cryptic as usual? <laughs> hmm, maybe, huh? So, okay, so let's go back to this one here. And what I want to do is um, kind of show you the difference here. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see this one. It is um, a loop on the top and then coming down and coming back up to make these little loops. This is the same setup, you guys, but it is, um, you know, it's more of an air, uh, a pointed link on the top and coming down from the sides and making those, those loops. Um, and this is just coming from the different a different way. All of these again are the same types of. You can see where the pegs would be. This very same setups, um, but they are not. You see here, this one should actually be like this, I think. Um, but this just depends on how you go and uh, twist that wire around. So super duper cute. Um, this I am going to give you. Ah. Uh, this would be a good thing to do here is I'm going to give you the skews for these pop these. Um, um, oh, okay. What is it saying here? Beverly says, try, try backing on, come back in. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you. Sometimes I don't know how to help because I don't. Uh, <laughs> Does that happen a lot, you guys? It seems like you guys know that. Lost the sound. Huh. Wow. So um, thank you, Beverly. That's very nice of you and Stephanie and everyone else. <laughs> Every time I type a message, it turns out the sound. Oh, I might not be able to do that then. That's weird. Okay, so da, 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 da. What, where, where was I? Oh, I was going to type in, I'm going to type in the SKUs for these, um, for these pearls, okay? Um, and let me see here, one. Eight O eight one O four dash O one S eight. And that is for these are eight millimeter pearls, you guys. Um just really, really pretty. And I've been working with cream, okay, and then this rose gold. So um and then, okay, so there's that one and the same one. Let me just see if I can copy that. Nope, I can't. I'm going to have to type it all over again. So 18088104 dash 11. Oops, not C. 
S. I see S. Eight. And that's for the rose gold. So I'm going to put rose gold on this one. And then the other one's cream. So much to type, so much to do. I'm able to get all this information out for you guys. So let's go ahead. I'm going to explain to you too, as usual, or if you guys aren't, uh, don't, um, haven't seen the show before, we always have two different patterns. This is the jig pattern for on jig work. There's always a, a lot of different ways to go ahead and make wire jewelry here. This is, let me put it under here. This is the one that's for the non-jig, and this one is just so that you can make your shapes, put it back down, and match it to this. So this is exactly the same. You know what? If this And this is a, a rough estimate for you guys, too, uh, which is nice for making earrings because you want to probably get pretty close. But, you know, you do you. So, and then all the information that you need for that is right down there. Um, these are the so many chandelier earrings because there's so many ways to do it. Also, for free on the John Bead um, Facebook page. Let me put that banner up here. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Free templates at Bead Projects and PDFs from John Bead Facebook group. So all of these are free, you guys. Free, free, free. Um, the, G, the, the jig ones are just like three bucks on my Etsy site. Um, but, um, these are the free ones. So go ahead and grab those, uh, where you can. So there's two pages right here. A little blah, blah, blah. tells you all the tools you need, all the different directions. Makes it lots very, very easy. And since I have my Sarah Hannes, it's even easier for me to do because I write it and she does it. <laughs> she is a pro. Okay. So. I thought what we would do is I'll show you a couple different um, ways to make these. We'll do the off jig first, and then we'll do the on jig. Um, and let's work with this beautiful fuchsia wire right here. Just love these. And I thought, you know, is this fuchsia going to go real with these rose gold? This rose gold is just such a subtle color, but I'm really kind of digging how these go together. It's just sort of like this interplay between the two that I love. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. All right. So for these little ones here, you really only need about four inches. And four inches is mostly just like just making sure that you have enough to pull, um, pull it around and work with it. I don't like to really use any less than four inches when I'm working, especially with a single piece, unless I'm working off the coil. Um, it's just me. So um, let's go ahead and make some room. Do, 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 do. And then we'll kind of come back to this, this too. Da, da, da. Any more comments? I don't know if you guys went quiet there. Um, okay. So it's weird. It's a, it's a windy day in here. And um, you can see the heater is right above me here. Um, so if I start like looking like the wind blown look only toward you, you'll know why. All right. So I'm going to grab the pattern. John jig pattern. And we're going to do it like that. I'm trying to focus this. It's interesting that it's not focusing too, too perfectly. Okay. So, hi, Terry. It's okay to be late to the show. I'm usually the one that's late, so I never judge when people are late. <laughs> but I love having you here either way. Okay. So, right here, and I just kind of wanted to say here, this will look a little bit different, but you could also, when we have two different colors, you can kind of see the purple core and then the blue uh, outer, outer ring. You can even do, uh, that's called nesting our um uh, our pegs and you could use either use the 1 8 inch peg which is right here or you can in this setup you can use the quarter inch so it's it's totally up to you let's go ahead and do the quarter inch so you can kind of see what's going on here I'm just going to start at the middle and um, this plier here this round nose I know this is just short of a, of a quarter inch so uh, we're just going to start like that oops 
and we ended up with not perfect circle. So there we go. Pretty close. And then what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to come and we're going to mark this. And I know where on my pliers I'm going to be able to make about an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to kind of come right around there and see. Oh, boy, my circles are not circly today. There we go. Right about there. Pretty darn good. And I'm just kind of putting, marking this here again and moving it to about where I know my eighth inch placement is on my plier, moving it, hopefully getting a circle. And I see it's a little bit smaller than this one, so I'm going to kind of go back in here and just tweak, 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 make it a little bit bigger like that. So this one. There we go. This one's a little off. So we're going to make it a little smaller. Okay. But basically, you just have this, uh, this spacing right here so that you can see, um, you know, how that's going to work for you. Obviously, in something like this, it's uh, a lot easier to work on jig, but we got you covered either way. So my cutters are... I know I just had them here. Here, they got put down. Perpetually losing my tools. So right here where the, the, um, where the wire is starting to overlap, I'm just going to get in there, and I'm going to just cut that. And where it overlaps so that when I push it down, when I flatten everything, that is going to lay flat, and nothing is, um, nothing is impeding it from itself. From itself. Okay. Do, do, do. And you can see how I'm holding that just so I make sure I'm not like hurting anyone putting uh, wire pieces through. You can probably see it better. It's a little lopsided, but not too, too bad for <laughs> making things right in front of you guys. So I'm going to find the one that is exactly the same as that one and just show you the difference between. So see how on this one here, we've got a tinier, this is the eighth, and this is the quarter. So even with those three top ones, you have, you know, so many more uh, options to be, um, to be forming these, um, these elements, right? And even with this one, I thought it was so cute. I mean, you can definitely build one, two, three uh, layers. You can build two layers. You can build two layers this way. Or what if we just did, stopped at this one and just did two sweet little pearls coming off of that and an ear wire. So adorable. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and build that one as we as uh, as I speak here. I just took apart these other earrings. So where is my... Uh, yeah, so... I just went ahead and I'll show you how to do these guys these in, in a couple minutes, guys. But I just made at least rosary links. This is basically just a pearl with, um, you know, a loop at either end. And this one I just left open so that I could quickly put it back on. on. Um, and I'm just going to throw that onto that, that link. Close it back up with my chain nose pliers. Boop, boop. And I'm going to do that here. And boom, which I love that already. I just love it's so fresh, these spring colors, this fuchsia and this green apple together. And then I'm just going to, my fingernails aren't working for me today, is make this and put this together in this little ear wire. And I'll, um, you guys, if you, uh, we did a little ear wire. Um, live uh, probably about a month or two, no, not two, at least a month ago now. So look for that in the free, um, the free things too. So just really cute. Let me see if we can, it'll probably show up better if I put it in 
because I just have my dark earrings on. Do, do, do. And it's super sweet, super cute and small, but definitely has a little flash and a little, you know, I love that. So we're just going to do the rest of the ear, uh, rest of the broadcast like this. <laughs> All right. So now that I showed you how to do this like off jig, uh, off jig already, you kind of know how you're basically doing it in that you're putting the, um, you know, you're making the shapes and you can put them down here. And a lot of times, even with this one, let me just do um, another one here. Just just even get this one started so you can kind of see for those of you who um, might not be here all uh, every week. And I'll just show you like how you can actually do say this one. This is B1. We've kind of got them labeled so that you kind of know which ones you are making. So to start this one off, I'm just going to kind of go back up in here and start it on my pliers. Right? So it's a little bit smaller than this. But I can just even kind of hold it. And with this, look how easy this uh, aluminum is to just sort of like switch around here. Just form it right around here. I just realized I uh, did did that element without even without even hammering it. That last one I just put in my ear. <laughs> oh my goodness! So I can kind of see what I've got going on here, you know. And let's just mark this one. I'm gonna go all the way to the back and let's see how well I do here. Pretty good. It's hard to make things super duper symmetrical. Oops. And let's see here. I'm going to get back to here and just kind of pull that one. So that's the one thing that I would need to work on here because I've got ooh, a big, big loopy, loopy thing here. And I am determined I'm going to do a nicer job. Yep, not too, too bad. And then we're just going to follow and come right back up here. You can see, follow that path. So this one is going to come up to here. And I'm going to mark this again with my flyer. And then just kind of come back down and go in that sort of where I know that spot is and see how I did kind of write it back down but you always know whoops wrong side where you are when you have the paper template okay yep and you can even kind of fix it on here if you want And let's see if we can go back down here. You guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. If I can't see them, I will definitely get back to you. And if you have any questions about wire working, wire wrangling, as I like to call it, give me a jingle, an email jingle. <laughs> Boy, I don't know why. I guess it's just that I'm doing these these links um, from so far away. But they are not, or these loops, I should say. Get back in there. And this one. A little better. And you'll get more practiced at this too as you go along. Especially because these are like really more complex shapes, you know. But that's the cool part about it, I think, to be able to do the wire shapes instead of just like simple shapes all the time. Thank you, Stephanie. All right. Again, so you're just going to take and just grab and, you know, get that extra wire off on both sides once you have it where you want it. And then um, we're going to hammer that. 
Not too bad. Not too, too bad. All right, so we've got those. I'm going to get those off of there. And grab that one, get that one off of there. I want to show you how to do this on, now that's a jig. So let's put this to the side. See my gorgeous um, vintage wallpaper that I got. All right. So grab here. And I just want to say too, like, can we see this pretty well here? Okay. And maybe we can. Nope. I want it to go like this. There we go. So we can see a little bit better. And let's see if we can drop that a little more. Oops. Ooh. Get that plugged back in before we have noises we don't want to have. Okay, where am I? Sorry. I don't want to make you... <laughs> a little bit different setup than I normally have. Okay, so those of you who know or have a jig, basically clamps to your, your workstation so it stays put. Right, Debbie? Hey, Lena Gillespie. Ah, okay. Good question, Beverly. Beverly has a question. Does certain hammering hurt damage the color finish on the aluminum wire? Good question. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's enamel, you know, um, and it's a soft wire. So especially with the aluminum, I think that's part of the reason that I just skipped, like, the, uh, the hammering on that little tiny piece. Figure, you know, think... Uh, you want your jewelry to stay together and you know and as i've said before you know you're not going to have this aluminum jewelry like you know be able to run over it right <laughs> but what i found of this aluminum wire is that you really can it really holds up pretty pretty well um and um someone said on sunday's show too neele my lovely neele patel if you guys don't know about silver silk get in there and find that out um he suggests using that uh, that tool dip stuff. <laughs> I never remember. Cool tools, I think, has some blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, thanks for that question. So, okay, so now I want to show you how super simple this is to do on these setups. Now, again, so we have this setup. I just set up the, the middle three because each element is covered then. Um, here you can see the jig underneath. Um, and but it just depends on how I put the wire around these this setup here you can kind of see a little hard to see with all this uh, stuff going on um, but let's let's show you just how easy this is with this kind of setup and you guys I don't uh, for those of you who are just watching now like I don't do this I just kind of wanted to show you just once in a while what's going on because I know it's super frustrating to say I want that tool and it's not available. So, okay, so I'm gonna lop about 10 inches off here. I'm sure this is probably more, more than that, but okay. Straightening it with my fingers, it's so soft. And so for here, let's start and we'll just do the three different ones. So in this particular one, this is the B2. And I haven't put the swivel locks in because we are working with aluminum and it does, they do have a little bit of a ridging, you guys. So um, it, I, I really don't like working with swivel lock when we're working with aluminum. The swivel lock is just something that is helping to keep the uh, wire anchored in place. And for you know um, that for me to say that is quite something because I always teach with the swivel lock. So I'm just holding this bottom right here and I'm crisscrossing this. I'm gonna come and because it's symmetrical, I can kind of work both sides at the same time. And I'm gonna come around this one. I'm gonna hold this here. You can see too, if I had this swivel lock, I wouldn't having, be having to hold this all the time. And then I'm just gonna kind of swoop down to here, kind of do this both. And by now it's gonna, it's gonna hold by itself right down here. I'm making sure everything is, is as much on the same plane as possible. OK. 
Okay, that means I'm going to just kind of take and um, even with my where's my chain nose pliers is just kind of grab in here from the side and make sure that those are nice and pinched together so they're on the same. That way you get a nice consistent shape. And I'm just going to kind of go around here and back down here. Okay. And since I have this right on the jig and I have that cut mark right down here, you can kind of see here, there's a little tiny cutter and it shows you exactly where to cut. So as long as we've got this on here lined up perfectly, we're going to take advantage of that and we're going to cut you know, with that cutter exactly where that cut mark says to go. Unless you can't get in here, and sometimes that's the case, and just mark it or memorize where it is and cut it when you have it off the jig. Alrighty. So generally I would take, you know, um, my wire lifter and bring this up off. This is This is a pretty simple little maneuver here. So I'm just using my fingers this time. And you can see how beautifully symmetrical that was. I didn't have to go back and down to the paper each time. And I have a consistent shape, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of these. So like say you really like the shape and you're going to be doing a necklace where you want to be doing like 30 of them. This is the thing for you. Okay. So let's do um, Let's do this one now. You're welcome, Beverly. It's so great to be here with you guys. Hey, by the way, I'm getting some more. Have you guys seen those ads for Zolul? I'm getting some. I'm loving these, uh, these glasses on me. So I'm like, well, why not get some more? And I just, I just have the, my reader prescription in them. The only other reason I need glasses is to drive, and I have my dedicated pair for those. I thought it would be fun. They were supposed to be on their way, so maybe by next Thursday I'll show you. All right. So for this one, I'm just following the wire path on this one then. Yeah, which is a little bit different. We're going to start off the same on all of these where we're kind of making this and crisscrossing. Um, so we're going to do exactly that. And instead of going um, to the side, we're going to go up and down and around on this one. I think that's what we did here. This is what we did. We did this one exactly right under here. Now we're going to do this one. So I'm just going to take and come down here. And this one, instead of going all the way back to this intersection point, it just goes all the way around this particular little piece here. That's the only difference for this one. A little bit of a, a bend in there I didn't want, so I just kind of backed up and made it better and there I've got that sometimes I go a little bit further just so I have that that circle embedded right in there where I want to sometimes if I don't go enough I just still have a little bit of a teardrop shape come on this is where the wire lifter is nice so we've got that shape there Oops, I'm going to go back in here again, and right where it starts to intersect, right before that, I'm going to cut that off with a nice, you see that I'm using the back of my cutter here, so I have a nice flush cut. So there's number two, and that one matches this perfectly. Let's do one more. You know what? Let's hop down to one of these guys down here, you guys. And for this one, 
here's a trick where it's a little bit hard for me to get into this to start here, especially if I'm not using my swivel lock. And I can see that I need to sort of start the way I did with this one, uh, only sort of upside down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one that I'm the same size per, um, peg. And I'm just going to make that first loop where I can get at it a little easier. You might even want to just put, you know, a, a same size peg down somewhere else so that I can then put it back on here, transfer it in the direction I want, and I don't have to, you know, get in all these, inside all these guys. Because some of these smaller elements are really pretty congested. Okay. Then this one, I can see my, I'm following my wire path down here. And I'm going to take it to here. And I'm going to do the same thing here, keeping everything on that same plane. Now, if you're not a solder, and certainly you don't want to solder aluminum wire, there's a couple different ways that we can do this, this one here. We can go all the way around with one side. Okay, and then cut right, as I have been telling you, right before where the uh, wire doubles up or intersects. Or what I can do, and then for this one, what you would do is on the other side of that wire, so there's only one, uh, there's no doubling up at all. Um, when you flatten it, um, you're going to cut right on the other side of this wire where it comes through. But you can also, for kind of double reinforcement here, go around both and then you can see that you have sort of a double up which sort of strengthens that loop and i'll show you what that looks like here and then um, it's just sort of a matter of how you like to do it um, and what effect you want so here's what i'm talking about when you get done you have this double loop here which when they're overlapping looks like a single loop and if you're putting like a double jump ring and something like that um, it just gives you a little bit more strength that way. I'm just kind of like pushing that one to the side a little bit so I can get in there. Maybe a little bit more so I can get in there and then as long as we are ready to sort of hammer some of these let's go ahead and get our bench block in here and for this one since i want these to overlap but i don't want them to hammer it on top of one another you know that can smoosh things i'm going to start out by just separating these just a tad and hammering them flat But then I'm going to pinch them together so they know where that memory is supposed to be. Like I want you here. Um, can you even see this? Okay. I'm going to hold my fingers off there. And you can see I'm pretty, I'm being pretty darn careful about my hammering. Usually, especially because I teach on steel a lot, I would say, let's move some metal. But with aluminum, you want to flatten and harden, which is it's it's not too bad for aluminum. I tell you, I'm I'm pretty thrilled with this stuff. Um, it's going to hold a shape, especially you guys for an earring um, in the 18 gauge. Um, it's just going to be just fine. And so there's that gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So I thought maybe what we would do is just take and just kind of look at some different um, um, combinations. If you're saying, oh, chandelier earrings are so 90s or whenever, maybe that's true. But definitely... Um, longer and bigger earrings you can make however you want uh, and just definitely think sometimes you might want to have something going sideways you just have to remember that you're going to have to balance where those pearls are and the weight and that type of thing uh, depending on how they go 
Um, but before that, I want to show you how to uh, quickly make some of those rosary chain links, these rosary pearl links right here. Um, and we're going to do those with the, I know, Stephanie, I think you, I think you contacted me through my Etsy shop too, didn't you? But good to, good to show. So if anyone has a jig that doesn't want one, Stephanie Wilson Hyatt is looking for a jig. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, again, these are the, these are eight millimeter, to be honest, and these check, uh, I was going to use like three different sizes of these check glass pearls from John Bead. Um, the eight millimeter, I could get to that 18 gauge to go through, but I didn't, I couldn't in the four or the six millimeter. You know what, let's go through the middle here. I'm just trying to get, my goodness. Do I have another cutter here? I just don't want to ruin these pearls. Let's see here. There we go. I was being too tender. I was going to say a comment uh, about my husband not thinking I was very tender, but he kind of thinks I'm tender, I think, sometimes. <laughs> so uh, you can take, you can do these, you guys, with your um, round nose pliers. I'm just, again, these, these work with uh, this beautiful fuchsia wire here. So I'm just grabbing some of this. And I certainly don't need a whole lot if you want to cut it, cut it ahead of time. When you get good, you won't, you could probably just work right off the coil. So I'm just cutting that end off so it's not slanted or anything. So it's got a nice clean thing. And then I'm just going to make the smallest little loop that I possibly can. I'm doing that so I know I can't feel it. And just don't grab this too, too hard. I'm going to just go a little bit further. And I'm going to go back to where I want that uh, flat loop or that uh, plain loop to come down, that lollipop on top, right? So it's centered just like a tree, tree this way. That's not very focused, is it? And I know it's not the camera's fault to ask StreamYard about that. So let's go and do that. Then I know that these just fit. So I'm going to go here. And hopefully I haven't done anything on the end of that. That's going to make me say it doesn't fit. <laughs> let's straighten this up again. And maybe the rose gold is a little bit smaller than the cream. Who knows? I wouldn't think so. It's giving me problems, though. Let's try another one. You know that I already did all these white ones, right? Okay. All right. Oh, good, good, uh, good idea, Kat, uh, Bev. You can even do a, a reverse listing where you're looking for something instead of. Okay, come on. Man, okay, so if you have trouble like I am, let's just see if we can't. start over again. Sometimes just clipping that end is enough to do it if I had a little bit of a smoosh in there. If not, we're going to show you how to do this with the cream. Ah, okay. Sometimes persistence does work. I told you they just fit. So I probably had some sort of just a little bit uh, with my cut on the end that was just made it a little broader. Who knows? Okay. So my idea for this is to get this really nice and close here. You see, I just I kind of shored that up against that loop there. Um, and I'll, all I'm going to do is take and bend this down. And I like to bend it. Sometimes people say to bend it um, in a right angle, but I like to bend it a little bit further than that 
so that when I make that loop, it comes back and makes a perfect, perfect, perfect round loop on top. And I go really about three eighths of an inch. And I'm going to get back in here and roll this guy. So again, out there, and I'm just rolling this, stopping so I don't hurt my wrist, and roll and roll again. And it's pretty darn close to perfect right on the end, and that's how I get a pretty darn close perfect plain loop on either end of those. And so say we want to add this one to the bottom here. We'll do that. Someday we'll do how to make a jump ring show. But I sort of cheated, and so I made a couple here. Since there are two loops going to one, I like to use them both. <laughs> How we contort our bodies to make our jewelry, right? And then I'm going to grab another one. Open it a little farther. I'm notorious for not opening things far enough. And then I'm going to take and I'm just going to fold this so I know that I've got the right things lined up together. And grab this again. So the link I gave you for the 18 gauge, you guys, was like all the, all the colors, which I sort of love. Isn't that, aren't those cute? Super cute. And I just love the interplay between the two colors maybe we want to put um you know some white pearls coming down from these guys here and then we'll put the ear wire on i like using a chain nose to open and close loops it's the round you can get away with it but you just have so much more strength i guess control with the, round, with the chain nose instead of the round nose. All right. That's super cute. Don't you love it when I admire my own stuff? <laughs> I get so excited for color, though, you know. And it depends if you want your, you know, your ear wire to blend in. Right now I've got this uh, apple green one made up, so I'm going to open and close this. And with this particular um, thing, there's not really a front or back. So I can put it on any way that I want. And let's see how it actually gets put on. I will be super duper unmatched. Oops, that's the one I already did. Do you ever do that in the morning? Like you've already put earrings on and you're like, I can't get this earring to go in. And it's because you already have an earring in that hole. <laughs> Wrong one. All right. There we go. Oh, I like this even better because it really shows off with this top. Super, super cute. So this is like <laughs> element A and this is elements B and C right here. So you can just, you know, honest to God, I like being able to show like how you could just do these so differently and then just add the pearls where you want them. Um, and again, going back to this picture here, this was the, um, so you can see on the left one, I used element B and also B on the right one on the bottom. So that one B is on the top on the left and the bottom on the right. And C, two of those are you know, the, the opposite. So on the bottom, on the left, and the top, on the right of those ones. And so those are the ones I took apart to show you what to do today. 
So, um, questions, questions, questions. Again, the patterns are free if the non jig patterns, if you just want those uh, and all the instructions, um, even how to make jump rings and stuff like that. Um, if you don't have a jump ring maker, I just kind of make a few at a time myself because I just like, I cannot get myself to like sometimes people like Keith Abu is one of my mentors. I just take a day and make all my jump rings. I'm like, huh? <laughs> just kill me now. <laughs> I don't like that, so I know I won't do it. <laughs> um, and so, okay, let me come back here. Looks like there might be some comments. Okay, so oh, Joyce, you are so sweet. She says she is inspired. I love your little little thing. You really have some cute curls there, Joyce. Thank you so much. Um, let's see what Terry's got to say. I got home one day and took off my earrings and had on two different ones. <laughs> You asked your husband why he didn't tell you. And Terry, if he's like my husband, I'm like, I didn't notice. <laughs> Things just don't matter to them like they matter to us. Debbie says she always likes large earrings. I know, I know. They really do uh they really do show off. But sometimes you just like just want a little bit of something too, right? You guys are so sweet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love this. You're welcome and good hunting. I know. Good good jig hunting, right? Right, Kath? Bab? Hey, um, I also wanted to tell you, and I forgot to do this, you guys, um, for when, when I was doing the announcements at first. Um, Beads of Courage. Beads of Courage is coming up. We have an online auction at Bev. Um, seeing Bev's name reminded me because she's made a few things for the auction. Thank you. So the auction's um, submissions are closed, but um, we are frantically, Deb Floros and I were here Saturday, just like she was at the computer logging everything like this. And I was like trying to keep everything like photographed and, and organized. And I just have a few more left. Some of the TV tray um, ones from that segment, you guys were, um, I thought I said, make, make me an element. And then it just made more sense to, um, to make individual, like whole pieces. So we have a lot more co collaborations. I hope it's all right with all of you guys. Um, they're not true collaborations because you didn't even know you were collaborating. <laughs> but, um, and I'll, I'll show you this next week when we uh, get closer to the thing. But there's some really, really, I mean, I am so, so proud of us. And the amount of money that we I'm going to get for Klimt uh, are going to bring in uh, for the kids um, to get their beads um, for Beads of Courage. Look it up, you guys, if you are not familiar familiar um, with uh, with this association because it's it's a volunteer um, and uh, 501c3 I think organization and um, we're just wrapping everything up I'm going to deliver everything and all the files to them on Monday and the auction is going to be April 5th through the 12th so we're going to get some bidding going I want all of you guys to help me get the word out to bid, to spread the word, all that kind of stuff, because this is, um, I'm so, we've been working on this for about a year. So I'm really happy to be able to say that we did such a super job together. Very proud. And th my thanks in case Deb is watching or watching on the repost. Mwah. Thank you so, so, so much for the help. She actually took five or six of those pieces I was just talking about that needed um, finishing and brought them home. Um, so, so for those of you who contributed TV tray pieces and yours looks a little different than what you sent in, we had a collaboration. Thank you. <laughs> and my apologies if, if you're not too thrilled with that, but it's all for the kids, right? Okay. So just, um, let's get back to this and see, um, ah, one side. <laughs> I love this, Stephanie. One side is church, is church and other is the club. <laughs> That's perfect. Yes, absolutely. Um, and just as we uh, follow up here, I just want to kind of let you know next week, I'm so excited. We're going to be doing this version of the Lady Gaga. Oops, let me let's 
support. Um, poor Stephanie is up here um, for all. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this, you guys. I may never um, for all perpetuity. Um, but we have this one. We, as you know, I told you that we did this metal one. That's one I did on um, on Sunday. But I couldn't. I could not. Um, ref refuse. I could not not do a beaded version. And this kit is up on www.etsy.com. Um, it's, I think I underpriced it big time. <laughs> Still getting used to that whole business side of things here. Um, so go ahead and grab this. What you get is you'll have enough wire to make uh, the whole piece, even the little olive branch that you see, all the wire. Um, but Sarah is going to actually make the steel frames um, because um, I also wanted people who just bead and do some sort of just fun kind of, you know, inner stuff um, to be able to participate as well. These are John Bead's uh, Iris uh, faceted rondelles. They're in one, two, five sizes, including the little tiny ones that are in the olive branch. Look at that color and that roof reflection coming off those beads so so beautiful um after that that's going to be obviously april 1st the rest of the A april is going to be called bring it on with brenda schwader um the first thing i think i'm going to do you can see this cool preciosa netting that's all crystals in these plastic um, cases um, and it's all netting and so i told carmi um, our um, VP of marketing for John Bead. I'm like, just give me some things to work with. I love the challenge, things that I don't know are just odd like me and I will show you how to do it. So I'll also kind of show you next week some other things that she sent me. Two different really interesting clasps um, and then some pony beads and then these iridescent beads that, I mean, there's five of them, so I'm going to have to maybe use two in one of them but um but that's what we'll do for the remainder of april is bring it on <laughs> then may we'll talk about may and april so um yeah so definitely you guys put this uh date on your calendar for the great beauty extravaganza sign up on that facebook group register um we just had three big prize winners um congratulations also to the prize winners that won um the three hammers that i gave away during let me see if i can remember cindy i know oh my goodness sharon and marlene can't remember the lady from montana's first name or last name. So, but anyway, congratulations. If you're watching, thank you so much for contrib uh, for being uh, with me the whole time. <laughs> so you had to be present to win. Um, guys, I think that is it. Um, again, please do share this if you think um, this is something that your friends or people are going to want to see, especially if you want to tell them about um, the Beads of Courage thing going on. Um, it just helps me continue doing what I do if you share. And you know what I always say, I love you forever if you do. All right, we have been going live for, let me see, there might be one more comment here that I haven't seen. You're welcome, Stephanie. You know I love you guys. And for those of you who guys haven't seen the comments, again, so very sorry. I'll get back to those um, when I can see them. Again, not everything shows through on StreamYard. And you know what I think I might do is just set up... Um, another iPad or something so I can see some of the other comments because it breaks my heart not to be able to talk to you when you're actually talking to me. I hate that. All right. Thank you, Danielle. Enjoy the rest of your week off. I know you're busy doing a lot of other stuff. It's not really a week off, but um, you guys have a good one. Have a great weekend. Enjoy. Relax. Take care. Adios.